What is up, ladies and gentlemen? You are listening to Fall Damage Central, Friday, October 20th, 2023. It's me, the Mighty Bildo. And of course, as always, old school legend. What's up, old school? Yo, yo, yo. Um, What's been going on with you this week? Not much, man. Same old, same old. Just uh, grinding at the job, trying to get that coin, get these bills paid. You know how it goes. Ain't that always a story, man? Yeah. <laughs> um, Do you see... I know you saw it. We talked about it already, but that uh, analog N64 uh, clone console they're coming out with. Yeah, man, that's going to be pretty interesting to see when it comes out. Yeah. You know, there's two problems with it that I could already foresee happening. Um, it's going to be like 350 to $400 probably right off the top. And it's going to be sold out within three and a half minutes of it going live on their site. I bet their site's probably going to crash and all these people are going to buy them all up and they're going to be sold out. So the regular Joe Schmoes like you and me won't have a chance at it. Yeah, definitely, man. So analog, a lot of people, uh, they criticize their business practices and stuff. And, you know, I, I don't know, man, that's, you know, that that's out of my wheelhouse there, but for me, if I'm trying to buy a product and you're marketing it as something that's going to be easily obtainable and then it's not, come on, man, like do something else. Or you, so they already know that demand for their product is going to be high because they've already made uh, an NES console, Super NES console, Genesis console, and they made a handheld console. All those always sell, sell out within minutes. And then it becomes this whole market on eBay with scalpers and all this other stuff. So why not just make enough to fill that demand? You know, I, I, and, and I get it, you know what I mean? Like parts aren't like readily available, all this other stuff. But to me, it just, it almost seems like it's like a, uh, like a special group or something like this is like geared towards, you know, a specific subculture of people that like want these analog consoles not for an average person like you and i yeah so is is that still an excuse nowadays uh you know chip shortage or parts aren't readily, readily available and all that i you know i don't think so because i i've been keeping tabs on the uh the retro tank 4k that mike mm. Chi's been working on and i know uh a lot of a lot of his issues was because of chip shortages and FBA, FPGA shortages, but he's he's up and going now. So this thing is uh, this is going to be released pretty soon. I would say probably before year's end. So as far as like the chip shortage, I don't think it's a thing anymore. But I could be wrong. Are you picking up the retro tank 4K? Nah, nah. That's that's probably going to be priced at maybe like around seven, 800 bucks. Oh man. And um, I mean, listen, I, I love original hardware, but dropping almost a thousand dollars to upscale something. I, I just, I, I can't justify it. So if I was like heavy into streaming and all this other stuff, if, if I was like recording and uploading 4k content, I would consider it. But you know, I got that five X pro and I'm, I'm completely content with that. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm looking at the page right now. So does it upscale to 1440 or is it just 1080, the 5X? What, the 5X? It, yeah. it could do 1440. Yeah, there's okay. there's an update where uh, some of the consoles can go up to 1440. That's sick, but still 325 big ones for that thing. Yeah. I think I think uh, one of these days I'm gonna have to pull that trigger there. Yeah, I've you know I I had the two X. I've had that for a while, and that thing's phenomenal. I think you know Mike Chi he does a really good job with his products. I haven't heard anybody really with any complaints about his stuff. I've seen a couple of YouTube videos of people just hating, you know, yeah. just hey, this guy didn't give me a review unit, so I guess I'll go buy it. Oh, this isn't worth it. <laughs> bullshit uh, it's, yeah you know well okay so it, it's relative right so 
hey, do you stream a lot? Do you upload a lot of video game content from like classic consoles? Okay, completely worth it. Do you just strictly play on like your PS5 and Xbox Series X and not play any of the other consoles that you need to upscale to a television or stream? No, okay, then it's not going to be worth it. Yeah, and uh, it is not sold out on his website too, so that's a big plus. <laughs> it's been out yeah. for a while and still not sold out, so that's good. I'd like to know how many he keeps on hand at any given time. Like, is is it just one dude that makes these things? I'm sure he's got a team I, of people at this point. No, as far as I know, it's just him. Wow. So from from my understanding, his process is he designs his boards however he wants to do it. He sends it out to some, you know, well-known electronic engineers like Voltar, um, Bob from Retro RGB. Um, there's a couple of others that, that are slipping my mind right now. But he all sends them out like review units and they all run their paces on them and do all this other stuff. They send it back to him so he could do like attunation or whatever whatever that word is attunement uh -huh. um, he does that and then once it's like ready to go he ships it off to a company and they just like mass print you know hundreds or however many he needs of like the boards he's got a company that does his uh mold injected printing for the shells yeah and then every I, i'm assuming they they put them together at like the place where he ships it off to like the factory or whatever. Yeah. And then I know he has a warehouse that they ship like pallets of this stuff back to him. Him and his wife do all the shipping, I think like out of their house, or maybe they have like a storefront or something that they use. Uh-huh. That's interesting. And for those of you listening that don't really know what we're talking about, this, if you're not into the whole uh, classic console thing. Retro tank is a company that makes, these little adapters that you plug your old school consoles in like your nes snes ps1 ps2 n64 all that stuff you plug it into there and then you run your it converts it up upscales it to 1080 1440 um for your modern tvs through hdmi or um component cables right component not composite no, you could you could use composite, you could use component, you could use S video. So the the retro tink 2x that's going to get you 480p because that's only going to that's only going to double twice. So your NES games, your Super Nintendo games, you're going to be able to get those to 480p. It gets really really complicated, and I I would recommend anybody who's really interested in it, um, check out the YouTube channel My Life in Gaming, and they have dozens of videos that go over all of the video signals, um, the different television modes between interlaced uh, video modes, progressive in video modes, because when you start getting into this stuff, you start learning about 480i versus 480p, and it gets very, very technical. So anyone who's interested in that stuff, I really suggest you check out My Life in Gaming and take a look at those videos and decide if that's maybe something that you want to get into and pick up one of these tank products. Hell yeah. <clears throat> um, you see that Xbox Activision deal is done complete now. It's Xbox done. So officially owns it. Done data. So I've seen some questions circulating online this week about uh, like possible IPs that Activision owned that Xbox might give the green light to again and start them up um some to my knowledge i don't think there's been any games of these ips i'm about to name in the past few years there's guitar hero um i know tony hawk they did the remake of one and two which is awesome but they haven't put out a new game of it in quite some time i believe spyro starcraft the true crime series and a personal favorite of mine, Geometry Wars. Um, there's a whole list online out there somewhere, but these are the only ones that jumped out to me. Um, do you have any like kind of guesses or anything on what games they might, you know, 
bring back and breathe new life into. I think there's rumors that there's uh, going to bring out Guitar Hero again. Yeah, I think Guitar Hero is probably going to be the main one. Surprisingly, there's a uh, there's a lot of people asking for a new Guitar Hero, um, and the rumblings are they're going. Me personally, I mean, if they do Guitar Hero, cool. Probably not something I'll pick up, just because to me those games are just a waste of money. Like you end up, you know, paying for Guitar Hero, and then you got to end up paying two or three dollars for any additional songs or any of that stuff. So one of my buddies was obsessed with Guitar Hero World Tour and Rock Band way back when, and I mean, he's he dropped hundreds of dollars Ooh. on songs. I mean, it was it was ridiculous, man. But then, like, we'd go over his house, like, on Friday nights for drinks or whatever. And, hey, man, let me bust out, you know, World Tour, Rock Band. And then he had so many songs. Like, it would take us probably, like, 15 or 20 minutes to decide, like, what we wanted to do. <laughs> and, and then, to top it off, when we finally picked one, it was one that one is that he didn't even, like, pay for. That it came, like, on the disc. Uh -huh. And for the most part, we had a handful of songs that, like, we all liked to do. And that was it. So... Yeah. But hey, man, you know people people are free to spend their money how they want. Yeah, I got I got G, uh, Guitar Hero two and three for the three sixty, and I never play, paid any additional money for any packs or anything. Um, I was just happy playing the twenty five to thirty songs that you got stock on disc, um, and that uh, Free Bird, that like nine and a half minute long, <laughs> that was my jam, dude. I love that shit. I played the hell out of it. Dude, I sucked at Guitar Hero. <laughs> Dude, I like, could only play it on like medium at the most. I could not go go to where they use like all five buttons or whatever that were up top. I could not yeah. do it. Dude, I couldn't even do medium. I always had to have it on like the uh like easy or like one star or like whatever that setting was. Yeah. And that was that was plenty for me. But there's a couple times I tried to do it like on the highest difficulty and I just <laughs> That game was just way too fast for me. Yeah, I like to see a new Tony Hawk. Um, I'm, I'm, I've never been big into like the skating uh, scene though, so I don't even know if it's as big as it was back when those games first started coming out. Um, but I think Tony Hawk, the video games, were like the thing that made skating as big as it was maybe back then. So I like mm -hmm. to see a new Tony Hawk. Yeah, I, I just don't know if they'd be able to get away with it, man, because um so they came out with the one in the, the one and two like remake or remaster, whatever it was. And I didn't so I, I love the original Tony Hawk. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater One mm -hmm. on the N64, PlayStation One, or the Dreamcast. Freaking love that game. And this remake that came out for the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4, for, for some reason, man, it just didn't resonate with me. Really? It, yeah, man, it just it didn't it didn't hit the way I thought I needed it to hit. So, so back on the PS3, it was a digital only, and it was a Tony Tony Hawk's Pro Skater HD. So it was the first Tony Hawk game that was on the N64, the Dreamcast, and the PlayStation One, redone in like HD graphics for for the PS3 at the time, and that was phenomenal because it was just it was exactly like the PlayStation One N64 Dreamcast game, um, but just polished for the playstation 3 yeah so i i love i like the remake for sure um i bought it as soon as it came out and it's awesome um the one thing that might like kind of didn't really piss me off but took me out of it was they took out quite a few of the original songs on the soundtrack because they couldn't get the licensing for them and they added oh, new man. ones in and I think the soundtrack is what made like 50% of that game at least. Oh, definitely. So I yeah, think so that I, might I, be it. From the first one, I mean, there's there so many bands that got introduced through that game. And, you know, I just, I every time I hear like a song, like, like from like Goldfinger or, you know, the Superman song, mm -hmm. I immediately just think of Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Yep. Oh, yeah. I think there was a Rage Against the Machine song in there that to this day I hear it. I think about skating in that first little warehouse level that you do. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, 
Spyro jumped out to me, but I never even played the original, so they could probably. I'm sure they'd make some money if they did a remake of that. But StarCraft, StarCraft is my shit. I played the hell out of that on the PC back in the day. I love to see a new StarCraft come out. I think StarCraft Two was still pretty big, but I'm not entirely sure. I haven't I haven't played it in a decade or more. I'd say a lot over long time over a decade, probably like two decades. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so one game yeah. i'd like to see them activision bring back is so they used to do spider-man games so i know we talked about this on the pod a couple weeks ago i i think when rhino was on we were talking about the uh the spider-man the first spider-man movie that got made into a game and it was on the ps2 and the original xbox and then it was spider-man 2 the movie on the PS2 and the Xbox. And then they came out with the Spider-Man 3 game for the PS2, the Xbox, the Xbox 360, and the PS3. But during the 360 and PS3 era, there were a few games that came out, uh, a few Spider-Man games that came out. One of them was uh, Shattered Dimensions, and Mm -hmm. um, the other one was Edge of Time. And those games are freaking amazing. They are so fun. They are so good. They're super expensive right now. If you were looking for copies of them, like you're going to, you're going to pay upwards of 50, 60 bucks, maybe a little bit more. So I would like to see them remaster those, release those with, uh, you know, some, some 60 FPS, some updated visuals, man. Let's get back to that. End of time. Eight. I'm seeing 80 bucks, 99 bucks, $94 on eBay. God. That's crazy. Um, true crime series. I haven't really played. I, I I have both of them, I believe, somewhere around here. But um, that's one that might be cool. I, I, if I remember right, it was like a you were a cop, but it was like a GTA style game, right? You can uh, run around, steal cars for people and stuff. I I don't. I don't remember if it was if it was that in depth. I do remember it was a third person shooter. I think it was similar to um damn. What is the game? Um I can't oh uh Strangle. Dead to Rights? Okay. No oh yeah, so Dead to Rights is one of the ones I was thinking about. Stranglehold is the other one. So Dead to Rights was on the PS2 and the Xbox, and then yep. um Stranglehold was on the PS3 and the uh, 360, and both of those games are like that uh, that third person where you kind of like Max Payne, the original Max Payne, where you you got that from behind view and you're walking Bullet around time. and stuff. Yep. So the I remember the controls on that not being great. So I I think like if you were to go back and play that now, you you would probably find them to be pretty clunky. But if they remade that man with some updated controls. All right, man, let's do it. Why Hell not? yeah. I'd be down for that. Um, and Geometry Wars. Have you ever played any Geometry oh, Wars I, games? I love three? Geometry Wars, man. Yes. Yes. Um, and this is a uh, just an idea that came to me just now, but I think it would be sick to have a Geometry Wars game in the style of like a, a Tetris 99 or something. Mm. Like a online thing that you could battle people, but still have it's like, your single player mode where you can do your thing. But yeah. I think that'd be pretty sick to battle other people and try to beat them. Um, I remember I, the very first geometry wars I got for the 360, and uh, a buddy of mine would play it constantly when we weren't playing Halo 2. We'd constantly play geometry wars trying to get that high score. And at the time, the high score was like a hundred million or something by this dude named, uh, I think his name was Billy Blaze, and because you could see the world uh, leaderboards on there, and the highest I ever got was like two point five million, I think, and I just it just got too crazy. I couldn't keep going, um, but I just actually when I got my Series X logged on, I downloaded the first one. I logged on and to look at the leaderboards, and dude, they're up to like trillions God. in scores on there now. It's so nuts. But so I'd like to see I, a new Geometry Wars. The original one that came out, like, on the 360, like, 
th- for me, that's my favorite one. I haven't played the second one. And then I've got a, uh, I've got one on the PS4. And I played it just a little bit, and I, like, it was, it was good, but it just, it doesn't scratch that itch for me the way that the first one does. Mm-hmm. The third one, yeah, I, I never really liked the second one, but the third one I liked because it had different game modes in it. Um, and my favorite being pacifism. So that's the game mode where you get all this stuff coming at you. I think it's just the blue little triangles though, or the diamonds. Mm -hmm. Um, but you can't shoot. So you have to just cruise around the map and dodge all these things. And then these two little bars come up. I I don't remember if they were in the first ones, but they look like barbells. And if you fly through the center, um, the two little nodes on the end will explode and destroy a lot of those little blue things that are chasing you. Um, and that was really fun to try to see how far you can go without dying and without shooting. Man. Yeah. They, uh, I haven't, I don't think they have any games out like that right now or anything even like kind of similar to that. So if that's the case, man, then yeah, bring, bring back some geometry wars. Hell yeah. Uh, hey, so we're recording this on the 19th. Tomorrow is a big day. And I don't think you're partaking in any of it. And it kind of makes me sad. We got Spider Man oh, 2 coming out. And we got the new Mario's uh, Wonder coming out. Yeah, no, I, uh, I'm going to hold off because Black Friday is just around the corner. And. If anybody has been listening to the podcast, you know that I don't like to buy games at full price. So <laughs> the uh, I, I think, as a matter of fact, the last game that I bought at full price was Final Fantasy 16. Mm-hmm. And it it may as well have just ran up and kicked me in the balls because <laughs> I didn't like it. I dropped 70 bucks on it. And now it's like I'm, I'm seeing, you know, sales go for it for like 35 bucks, 30 bucks. I'm yeah. just like, uh, uh. <laughs> so thir- if I paid $30 for Final Fantasy 16, I would have liked it. Um, $70, eesh. but yeah. I'm actually, I'm still working on Cyberpunk. Um, I am just having the time of my life with that game. So much so that I think, uh, I think I'm actually going to do a, a video on it eventually, just oh. uh, given like my honest thoughts about it. It'll be the first time I actually do like a review. So it might suck ass, but I just I, I really really enjoy this game, dude. I'm and, here. I'm here for it. And I've got we were talking about that GameStop sale from last week. Um, I've got one last batch of games coming in Saturday, so that'll put me at 28 titles that I got from this sale. But Damn. I will be doing, I will be doing a pickups video on that. Um, that'll be the first upload on my channel. So anybody listening, stay tuned for that. Hell yeah. I'm excited for that. Um, yeah, I thought about doing reviews on my channel and stuff, but the problem with me is I don't, I normally don't finish games. Like uh, <laughs> the last game I 100% completed was Dead Island 2. And all that gameplay is up on the channel. Um, <clears throat> I really thought about doing a review for it, but when I just sat down and tried to think of what, what I could say, I was like, shoot, I don't know. I'm not really a review type person. Like, I I say either, I, yeah, I like it, or yeah, it sucks. I don't know. I, I, I have a hard time picking out things that I liked and things I didn't like and stuff. Um, that's cool. I like to see what you say about Cyberpunk. And as far as like whether it sucks or not, who gives a shit? Like the only way you're going to get better at doing anything is to just do it. And that's a message to everybody out there watching too. This is truth. This is truth. Yeah. So, so my reviews, man. Uh, so actually uh, coming off of your recommendation, I watched the uh, Anchorage Joe review of um, Starfield. Yep. And it was, uh, it was long, man. It was like over an hour. So, I cannot do something like that. Uh, mm-hmm. He he went over a lot, a lot of stuff, um, mostly about loading screens and graphical like errors and just like 
ridiculous like missions and stuff that happen in there i i really just want to do a video where i'm just giving my thoughts like hey i thought it was cool that you could do this i thought this wasn't cool that you could do that um i'm not going to talk about you know graphical prowess or frames dropping or glitches or anything like that i just want to talk about my experience with the game yeah yeah and that starfield review that he uh he did was spot on all the stuff that he talks about in there is the same stuff i was experiencing with the load times and fast travel and the weird awkward uh scenes where you're talking to npcs and it's just ah it's just weird yeah that's too bad man that really is because i thought that was gonna be uh I thought that was going to end up knocking off Tears of the Kingdom, in my opinion, for Game of the Year. Yeah, I think I think Bethesda just needs to, like, a complete and total rehaul, if that's the right word, or yeah. just build a whole new... Uh, engine. Uh, engine, yes. Engine, that's the word I'm looking for. Engine for their games, because... The like, I've never been a huge Bethesda guy. I never I played Skyrim a little bit, like for a few hours when it first came out. Never finished it. Never played Oblivion. Never played. Uh, I did play a few hours of Fallout Four, but that's all of the four, Fallout series I've ever played. But uh, with Starfield coming out, I did a little research, and apparently they've been using the same engine since like Oblivion, or maybe even earlier than that. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean if you play you play Fallout 3, you essentially played Skyrim because mm-hmm. like it it's damn near the same thing. The only difference is like there's there's dragons in Skyrim and not Fallout. I think they're mm-hmm. both amazing games, but it's like you you already know what you're getting. So Yeah. You know what's funny that I heard today? I didn't play Starfield long enough to get to this point, but apparently there when you get like your uh powers in the game like i guess you have like magic powers at some point they call it starborn just like in (laughs) skyrim it was dragonborn it's like come on you couldn't do better than that (laughs) that's wild i know all those bethesda fanboys are gonna if any of them see this they're gonna be eating my ass in the comments yeah they're gonna they're gonna find you they're gonna dox you (laughs) <laughs> gonna try to fight you. You yeah. see in the grocery store and try to try to swing on you, man. Yeah, right. Damn. Yeah. So I so based on everything that I've read and I've seen about Starfield, I played maybe like two hours of it. I didn't get anywhere. I was just exploring. Um, so one of the things that I thought was funny is that he talked about uh points where you get to where you're exploring and there's just like an invisible wall that like you can't go past. Mm-hmm. So at the beginning of the game, that first planet you land on, I was just exploring, and I I've ex- I experienced that like <laughs> hitting like an invisible wall. You just can't like you try to walk forward, and it just like moves you to the right or to the left. Like you just yeah. like you can't move forward at all. Um, but based on everything that I've read and I've seen, I I don't know if I need to play Starfield. Mm-hmm. I don't, and you know I I had actually signed up for game pass specifically for starfield i was like oh man you know like i'll give it a try for a little bit but yeah i think uh i think that's gonna go on a maybe maybe in a year or two i'll try it out yeah are they known for like updating their games and stuff and putting more content in later yeah so you're gonna get most likely you're gonna get uh mods coming probably like the next few months or something and you're going to have like people like in the community just making all kinds of different mods and stuff and that's really where the where the fun comes with these games is because you could do all kinds of crazy stuff with skyrim they had the uh the macho man randy savage mod where the uh the dragons had like the macho man's head on it and instead of uh that like epic you know, dragon music. It was the uh, the pomp and circumstance that he used to come out, like the graduation music that he used to come out to his entrance when he wrestled matches. Mm-hmm. Um, and they have another one where it's Thomas the Tank, 
uh, Thomas the Tank engine. So all the dragons turn into Thomas the Tank. So you just look up and you <laughs> see like this damn train flying in the sky. <laughs> Dang, dude. Yeah, it sucks that Bethesda's got to put the game out and then all the mods out there, the modders got to fix it. Got to make it better. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 you know, and it's typical too, you know, like with, with the first release of most Bethesda games, there's a whole host of like glitches and bugs and all this other stuff. But after mm-hmm. time, like a lot of that stuff just gets fixed up with patches. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we were talking last night a little bit. And you brought up a, a crazy point that I kind of wanted to talk about. Uh, and I'm going to let you go into it about the whole, uh, are Mario games really good or just uh, games from your childhood in general that have been around so long? Are they really good or is that the nostalgia feel? Is that kind of what you're getting at? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I've been in a group chat with a bunch of buddies and one of them brought up the point because uh, he's 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 not a Nintendo fan at all. Um, he used to be when he was younger, and now he's just uh, he's got an Xbox, and you know he doesn't he doesn't game as much as you know I do or any of my other friends. But he he asked the question if the Mario games are really good or we're just conditioned to think they're good because that's what we grew up playing. Mm-hmm. And at first I was like, well, yeah, they're great, but and then I got to thinking, I was like, wait, are they good though? So it became like this whole big discussion that maybe they're really not as good as we think they are. We're just conditioned to think they're that good because we have that nostalgic feeling for them because we grew up playing them, et cetera, et cetera. So I used the example yesterday when I was talking to Bildo. Um, Bildo has a kid. So I said, you know, if you if you get your daughter playing these Super Mario Brother games, do you think that she legitimately enjoys playing them, or does she enjoy the time that she's spending with you while you guys are playing with that? Mm-hmm. And then in turn, when she gets older and she has her family and her kids, if she plays that game with her kids, is it because her kids really like that game, or they just enjoy the time that they're spending with their mother playing that game? Mm-hmm. So yeah, Dude, that's uh <laughs> that kind of blew my mind last night when you told me about it too. But I was thinking about it right before we got on here and every like I'll buy a ton of the Mario games that come out. Like I got quite a few of them for the Switch already. Um I think the 3D Mario games are awesome. I think those are really good games and I play the crap out of them when I when whenever one comes out. But as far as the 2D side-scroller ones, like Wonder that's coming out tomorrow that I also pre-ordered and I'll be picking up after work, uh, like I'll buy them and I'll play a few hours of it. But then once I'm done that first initial time playing, I'm like, I'm pretty much done. Like I might get an itch to play it, you know, a few months down the line or a year down the line, like you said, uh, get the kid, uh, like I pl- fully intend tomorrow to pick it up, um, after work, bring it home and, uh, grab the kid and just sit on the couch and play it for a few hours with her. Um, but then after that first initial play, like play time, when is the next time that I sit down and actually try to play it? That's, that's what kind of tells me that those 2D games, the side scroller type Mario games, might not be that good for me at least. But uh, it might be just the nostalgia feeling of playing that Super Mario 3 on the NES when I was a kid with my dad, you know, like you said, with your parent, you know? Mm-hmm. So for me, um, Super Mario Brothers 1, Super Mario Brothers 2. Super Mario Brothers 3 and Super Mario World, I have played and beaten countless times. Uh, mm-hmm. There was a point where, like, every other month I was playing through Super Mario World or Super Mario 3, just doing like all kinds of stuff. Um, N64 came out. I actually I didn't really get into Mario 64. I've never beaten Mario 64. Ooh. 
that's that's one of the games I want to go back and I want to I want to play from start to finish and go ahead and beat it. But I actually I didn't like Mario sixty four uh, for the longest time. I just it didn't do it for me. Um, Super Mario Sunshine came out on the GameCube. I didn't play that one either because I thought it was going to be too similar to Mario sixty four. And then the Wii came out. And it was a new Super Mario Brothers on the Wii. I had gotten that, and I really didn't like it. And that's a, that's a two D side scroll in Mario. Mm-hmm. I just for whatever reason, I just couldn't get into it. I don't know if it was just like the new mechanics and stuff. I didn't like it. So with that, I always kept comparing it to Super Mario World, Mario Three, Mario Two, Mario World. I never got the same feeling playing those as I got that. So fast forward to the Wii U, um, uh, the new Super Mario Brothers Wii U came out and the same thing. I just, I didn't like it. Nah, man, I can't, I can't get with it. Then that uh, Super Mario 3D World came out on the Wii U. I got that and, eh, you know, it was all right. You know, no big deal. The Switch comes out, Mario Odyssey drops. And I ended up getting Mario Odyssey and I love Mario Odyssey. Mm -hmm. I, I, I played the hell out of Mario Odyssey when it first came out. Yep. Really, really enjoyed it. So I was like, oh, okay. Um, but now, you know, we got... Oh, yeah, so I, I picked I picked up the other uh, port of New Super Mario Brothers U for the Switch. Um, I haven't even played that because I, I played it on the Wii U and I know I didn't like it, but I just got it because I think I got it for a cheap price or something. And mm-hmm. then the other one I got was the uh, the 3D World um, port that they did on the Switch too that has like a like Bowser's Fury, I think it is. Yep. Um, that's another one. I, I just, I didn't, I haven't opened it yet. I haven't played it, but now it's, with Super Mario Wonder coming out, like I'm kind of interested in it. It looks like it would be fun. It looks like it would be cool, but I'm just nervous that I'm going to fall into that same trap that I fell into with new Super Mario Brothers. We new Super Mario Brothers, you, where it just doesn't, it doesn't feel the way I think it should feel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a crazy question because just sitting there listening to you talk about all those games and everything, and then me sitting here reflecting on my time with games like that, I'm like, man, those those games are freaking awesome, man. Uh, but one thing you can give to Nintendo with all these Mario games that they put out is they constantly innovate and put new things in there to draw in new people. Mm-hmm. Like this elephant Mario thing that's going on, I think that looks so cool when I watch the commercials for it and stuff. And yeah. I, I can't wait to get in there and check it out. You know, and this this isn't bashing on Mario Brothers, because like I, mm-hmm. I like Super Mario Brothers, man. I am a Mario Brothers fan. Yeah. But one of the other points was brought up was the premise of every Mario game is the same. Yes. Except for this one. Apparently this yeah. one, Peach doesn't get kidnapped. Yeah, but so, I, somebody gets kidnapped, right? Don't they steal like a star or something like that? I, uh, it might be a star or something, but Bowser like infuses himself with the uh, main castle or something. Mm-hmm. Um, I watched a short video on it today. I forget exactly what they said, but I got I was under the impression that nobody gets kidnapped by Bowser in this one, but he does steal. Like I think it was was it Odyssey that he stole a star. Or did he still did he kidnap Peach in that one too? Uh, I think he kidnapped Peach in that one. He did. Oh, I'm thinking of the movie. He didn't kidnap anybody in the movie. He just stole the star or whatever. Star, yeah. And I think that might be the case here. So, uh, two of the games on the Wii that I didn't mention was a uh, Super Mario Galaxy, and I've actually never played either one of the Super Mario Galaxy games. Neither have I. I just they like to me they just didn't look like they would be fun. I don't know. Maybe, maybe they're fantastic, and I need to just give them a try. Yeah, I got the all the three D All Stars collection on the Switch, so I I want to go and play them, but I just haven't gotten around to it yet. You know how that goes. Yeah. But um, so kind of kind of piggybacking off on this. So, what what's to say what what a good game is, right? Like. Starfield, for instance, what's what defines that as like a good game? So I 
I personally think it's in the eye of the beholder. So mm-hmm. if you have a good time with it, then that means it's a great game. It could it could review bomb like everywhere. Nobody else could like it, but as long as you like it, that's a great game. Yeah, yeah. I think I think in general, whether a game's good or not is completely um, up to whoever's playing it. It's going to be subjective or uh, objective, whichever one goes there. I don't know. So subjective is the opinionated one. <laughs> okay. Objective subjective. is fact. Okay. Yeah. Subjective. It's subjective. If uh, Joe Schmo is playing it and loves it, it's great. It's a great game. If I'm playing it and I think it sucks and it's a sucky game to me. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I think. But then you got to think about like the overwhelming majority of people like on Metacritic, when you get all the user scores coming in, it taking the idea of review bombing out of it. If a large group of people come together and say, Oh, this is a great game for this, this, and this reason, then I don't know because somebody else could play that game and say, ah, now this sucks. (laughs) (laughs) That's a hard question, man. You're like, melting my mind right now yeah so it's like, it's like the same thing with like reviewers too so like like what gives you the qualification to review a game to properly uh-huh. like hey i work for ign and i'm getting to review uh whatever the fuck uh dead rising right um not into horror movies not into zombies not the scary shit but yet i'm reviewing this zombie game so is my reviewing going to be skewed because like I'm not into that stuff or mm-hmm. am I going to be able to give you like objective information? Hey, this game sucks because when you get to the third world or whatever, the save always gets corrupted. It's a broken game. You can't play it. Okay, that's fine. Instead of, hey, this game sucks because you're killing zombies. <laughs> yeah, I like killing zombies. Like what? What sucks about that? Yeah. You know? Yeah, I get it. It's It's a lot to digest, man. A lot to digest. Yeah, that's crazy. That's why I say, man, play play what you like and like what you play. Yeah, screw everybody else. That's right. Um, But that being said, Spider-Man 2 and Super Mario Bros. Wonder are both, like, in the low to mid-90s on Metacritic. (laughs) <laughs> yeah so people are really digging them and i'm excited yeah and i i think they're going to be fun you know i think if somebody liked the original spider-man game well i shouldn't say the well the the first spider-man game that was on the ps4 and then got ported to the ps5 and the miles morales game yep. you're most likely going to love this game too oh yeah and i love the hell out of them games yeah um, I'm actually, I'm actually probably gonna put up some. Uh, I'm definitely gonna put up a first impressions video at some point. Um, yeah, maybe later this weekend. But I might just start uploading more condensed gameplay, like with the other games that I put on the channel, like uh, Dead Island and uh, Zelda. There was a little bit of um, Final Fantasy. I feel like I put. Uh, too much time. Like I didn't cut them down enough. I should have uh, cut out like the boring parts where I'm not really saying nothing or uh, there's really not much going on in the game and just kind of cut it up into sections um, to make it a little bit more digestible. Um, so I think that's what I might do with Spider-Man too. Just um, have the part one, part two, part threes, but cut cut them down to maybe 10, 15, 20 minute videos of just the highlights of what's going on in the game rather than every single second of my gameplay. Yeah. Or what, what if you live streamed it that way? If somebody joins the room, they say, Oh, build those stream in this. Let me go. Let me pop in there. Shoot the shit with somebody while you're playing. And then, you know, once you're done recording, edit your video, cut out like the, the lulls and stuff and just add all the exciting stuff in there. That's true. I might do that too. I thought about it. Um, maybe, Maybe not the entire game, but maybe like a few parts of it. I don't know. Yeah. 
Yeah, because I so I was thinking of like how I would upload like game content, and I just I don't know. I, I think I'm gonna end up live streaming, and then just kind of going back and editing my videos before I upload them, mm -hmm. because I. I, I don't think I'm going to be able to sit there and record footage and like narrate while I'm playing at the same time. Yeah. So worst case or best case scenario, I play in silence. And then when I edit the video, I just do voiceover in the back. Mm -hmm. We'll see. I thought, yeah, I thought about that too, man. Yeah. We'll figure it out though. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, buddy. You uh, have you seen the wrestlers show on Netflix? Uh, yeah, I started watching a little bit of it, man. Um, I got maybe like four four episodes in, maybe five episodes. Um, and then I just I kind of stopped watching it. Yeah, I just watched a third episode last night. Um. And I'm I'm kind of in the same boat. It's like, man, it's all right. But that one dude, uh, the younger guy, it looks like that bought OVW. Um, you know who I'm talking about? The guy that has a seizure. The, the, in like episode yeah, three. the radio station guy. Yeah, yeah, that guy is a dick. Man, I, I hate would him. Beat his fucking ass. <laughs> like if if I was a wrestler for OVW, like I would beat the fuck out of him. But Dude. I kind of feel like he's I, I kind of feel like he's like exaggerated on the show just to make it like more interesting, just to like uh -huh. have like that conflict in there. Um, but yeah, man, he he just he seems like a fucking D bag. That's so true. Like when you're watching a show like that, even though it's like a docuseries or something like who's to say what's real, what's not? Yeah. Well, did, did you see the episode like where he had that seizure? Like they were all yes. like in the back, like talking. And then he was like, <laughs> At, yep. at first, man, I thought that shit was fake as fuck. I was like, man, uh -huh. what, like, come on, man, really? But then I was like, oh, <laughs> shit, maybe, maybe it's for real. Yeah. And then, like, when he was done with it, like, he was trying to talk and he was like, uh -uh. he was slurring and stuff. Yeah. He was uh -uh. messed up. Yeah. And then, so the, the thing that got me, and I was like, oh, shit, all right, this is for real. And then I felt kind of bad because I was thinking that he was lying about it was um, the guy offered him a ride home. And he was like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm all right. But then like the camera was outside and they're walking to the car and the, the dude that was trying to give him a ride home ended up giving him a ride home. So yeah. I was like, oh shit. So he must've been bad enough to where he was like, all right, like, can you drive me please? Yes. Yeah. And like the last two minutes of that show last night, like I hated that guy up until that moment. Then I kind of started feeling bad for him when I seen him going through that. So I'm like, I wonder if he's not going to be a dick anymore in the show, like after that little thing. So the uh, the, the episode after that, it goes, it tries to, uh, it paints like a little bit of a sob story, how like he was like an only child and like all this other stuff. And, you know, he just wants to like fit in and he wants to be told that he's doing a good job because he's he doesn't know anything about the wrestling business and all this other stuff. Yeah. So for, for me personally, if I was in that position, let's just say like I bought like a fucking uh, a construction company. Like I, I know fuck all about construction, mm -hmm. roofing, carpentry, none of it. I'm not going to go in there and be like, hey, I don't know fuck about anything here, but let me tell you guys how you're going to do your job. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, <laughs> like I would never do that. And that's, yeah. that's kind of like, it, it seems like that's what he did. He came in and was like, hey, like. I own this company, so let me tell you what you're going to do as a wrestler, even though I've never wrestled before and I don't really watch wrestling. I'm yeah. going to tell you what I think you should do. And that's, and I think that's where everybody got rubbed wrong. Yeah. That's definitely where I was like, dude, this guy's a dick. I don't like him. Get him off the show. I, I was hoping I'd see Al Snow punch him in the face or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, did, did I ever tell you about the time I met Al Snow? Uh, I don't think so. So back in 2001, I was working for uh, an after school job at Software, etc. And this was before like GameStop took over like the whole conglomerate video game chain stores. Um, 
Software et cetera was a game store, similar to like uh, Electronics Boutique and GameStop. And for whatever reason, um, well, not for whatever reason. So WWF Survivor Series came to the Ice Palace in Tampa. And for whatever reason, they sent the Software et cetera company all these like tickets for the employees and stuff. So it was like backstage stuff. It was a it was supposed to be a meet and greet with like quote unquote wrestlers because that's what it said wrestlers plural um, yeah. and then there was like you're sitting in a box and there was like food and like all this other stuff and then once you were done if you wanted to you could go sit out like in the crowd and these seats were like damn near ringside insane hmm. anyway we go like we're back there and hmm. we go to the meet and greet and the wrestlers Al Snow nobody else it's just <laughs> Al Snow and like. He just looks fucking miserable. Like, he hates his life. Like, he wasn't wrestling on the card, so he was probably yeah. pissed about that because he wasn't getting that payday. But he was back there, and I mean, he was just such a fucking dick to everybody. Really? So I told him, I said, hey, man, I was like, I, I'd love to get into wrestling one day. And he's like, get in line. That's what everybody says. <laughs> <laughs> you won't make it. And I was just like, damn, dude, all right. Like, fuck you, pussy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but Damn. that was also the, that was also the event where uh, it was uh, Rikishi versus Stone Cold. I think it was. Oh no, no, no it was a uh, Triple H versus Stone Cold and Rikishi versus the Undertaker. Maybe. Uh huh. Rikishi fought somebody. I can't remember. Or it might have been The Rock. Um, and when Rikishi came out to the ring, I yelled like it was real loud. And then right as I yelled, it it got super quiet. <laughs> And I went, you fat fuck. <laughs> and like, it got real quiet and he heard me and he was looking dead at me, dude. He was like, I almost shit myself. <laughs> he, he got <laughs> jumped over a little barricade. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we were sitting, so where the commentators sit like ringside, we yeah. were probably like three rows back from them. So we were, we were close as shit. Dude, that's great. That's great. The only wrestling event I've ever been to was with you with for that AEW Dynamite and Rampage taping, and then that SmackDown that one time, and that was yeah. it. I wish I would have been at one show like back in the Attitude Era. I think that'd be so crazy. Oh yeah, or if I can go to ECW show, what? Oh yeah. man, that would be so good. Oh yeah, that'd be nuts. So um, uh, I I know you listen to Busted Open now, um, mm -hmm. you know they they got an event coming up here at the uh, the old ECW arena, and that's maybe like thirty minutes from where I'm at. So if you if you ever want to come to one of those events, man, come up to Philly and we could uh we could go check one of them out, one of those independent shows they got going on there. All right, is that like a just a Busted Open event that they're putting on? No, no, no. So like that that arena, it's like. It's not called the ECW arena anymore. It's like the uh, the 3200 arena or something like that. So uh -huh. they it they host like all kinds of like events in there. So okay. they might have like some um, like hockey, not like ice hockey or anything, but like uh, like rollerblade hockey or it's just one of those arenas that you could just rent out for like an event, like sporting uh -huh. events and stuff. So whoever whoever the promoter is, they they go, they rent it out, and they book a bunch of guys. That's dope. Uh, we go out. What's what's the uh, chances of getting robbed or something in downtown Philly? Uh, <laughs> pretty high, pretty high. <laughs> but uh, you know, you, I, I stay carrying that strap. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, uh, they could they could try to rob. <laughs> they, they could certainly try. Yep. Yep. Um. <laughs> Uh, have you, I know neither of us really watch AEW anymore, but have you been following any of Edge's run in AEW? No. Yeah. I just watch the clips that come up on YouTube and it's just, uh, I think, and uh, it's, I'm in a group chat with a couple other buddies I know from Florida and some of them are into AEW. They really like it, but I just cannot do it. Like I feel like this run that Edge is doing there now is gonna 
might not tarnish his legacy, but it ain't never going to live up to anything he's ever done in WWE. Yeah. And, and I think that's the problem. Like with, with like what happens with AEW is like they bring in like former WWE talent. And then like the expectation is, Hey, this is going to be like a huge star here, just like they were in like WWE. And yeah. that's not the case at all. Like look at, um, what the hell's the girl's name? The the girl that was Paige. Um, Sanar, Saraya. 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 Yeah. So, you know, it was a big deal because she couldn't wrestle. The doctors in WWE wouldn't clear her to wrestle. But mm-hmm. for some reason, the doctors in AEW cleared her to wrestle. So, okay, cool. So now she's like wrestling, but like nobody gave a fuck. Like she like she came out and like the first couple times like she was on TV, like people were like, oh, okay. And then, like the third, the, the third time, everybody turned on her. Like she started getting yeah. booed. She was supposed yeah. to be like the big, like good guy, and everybody's yeah. in the crowd booing her and stuff. So then yeah. they turned her into the bad guy, doing all this shit, and like nobody, nobody cared. Like nobody gave a shit about anything. So she won. She won the women's title at Wembley at that mm-hmm. event, and that was that was very obvious that that was like a hey, here's a big moment for you because you know you're British or in London. Hey, um, but everybody shat all over that fucking title ring that she had. Yeah, and, and she just within, lost like, it randomly. Yeah, like a month later, if that, she just lost it on dynamite or something, didn't she? Yeah, and it was it it was like last week, as a matter of fact. Oh, last uh, last Tuesday. Yeah, it was last Tuesday, and apparently, I guess from from what I saw, like the match was just like lackluster. It was just very like matter yeah. of fact. Like, oh, okay, that's it. Um, there was no build up or anything to it to uh, the girl she was wrestling. I, I don't even remember who who it was that beat her, but it was just a thrown together match and then she ended up losing and it was just like, oh, okay. So who knows what's gonna happen with her? Um Yeah. You know, the Adam Cole, that's another guy. Dude, it, like in NXT, Adam Cole was the man. Mm-hmm. Like it's freaking probably in my opinion, I think his NXT run was the best run he's had in his entire career. Then he goes mm-hmm. to AEW, gets hurt, isn't really doing much, gets hurt again. Yeah. Kind of kind of floating around here and there and now he just got hurt again. Like he just yeah. fucking broke his ankle and had surgery and I'm like, "Man, this dude cannot catch a break in AEW." No. Dude, yeah. You know, I hope I see, you know, one day, everybody online saying, oh, yeah, CM Punk's coming back in Survivor Series. The next day, he's not. The next day, he is. The next day, he's not. Um, but I really hope that he does come back, and he's, like, totally cool with everybody in the locker room, and he's nothing but a pleasure to work with there. And then every time he goes out there, he just buries the shit out of AEW. I would love nothing <laughs> more for that for that guy. Yeah. They're, uh, they're doing pretty good with their marketing, man, because you're – you're going to be forced to watch Survivor Series to see if he's going to show up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You got to wonder that, too. Like, is all this, like, back and forth just a game by them to just add to the suspense or whatever of it? So, I, people online, I see on Twitter, like, they keep saying that, like, Corey Graves and, like, all these other people keep, like, dropping hints. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't think that they're dropping hints. Like, it, it's not, like they're just saying stuff and it just happens to be like, it's very coincidental. Like it's nothing. They're not spreading. They're not planting any seeds for anything. So they, uh, they do, they do mention like best in the world quite a bit the past, like three or four weeks. I They do and that then, a lot though. With Do, do they? And then yeah, uh, because, Shinsuke so, doing the GT GTS. So that was that, that I thought was kind of weird. I was like, Oh, okay. Um, but, um, when Shane McMahon was wrestling, like he was like the best in the world. He won, he had won like that trophy that was calling himself like best in the world. And this was well after CM Punk was gone. Um, mm. But there's just like some stuff that like is happening and they're like, Oh, I, I saw Michael Cole drinking a Pepsi on, <laughs> on camera and CM Punk has a Pepsi logo tattooed in his arm. So yeah. that's, that's just like another, and it's crazy to me that like all these people, like they're creating these stories. And then if it doesn't happen, like they're gonna be so pissed off, and it's like, what? It's like the same thing with like the 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 Rock and Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. Like yeah. last year, everyone was like, "Oh, the Rock, he's coming into the Royal Rumble." 
he's going to win the Royal Rumble. It's going to set uh, up. Royal Rumble comes and goes. No rock. Oh, he's he's going to be at Elimination Chamber. You're going to see he's going to come to nothing. Yeah. Nothing, nothing. And I'm just like, people, stop. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. Just have fun, man. Just like be I, a fan. I don't, I could care less. Like, I do not want The Rock to come and face Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. I would, I would hate that because you know The Rock's not going to win. Uh, but what I would, well, I wouldn't mind if he took on Roman Reigns at like a Royal Rumble, like main event in yeah. Royal Rumble. I'd be fine with that. That'd be cool. And then uh, the follow up off last year's WrestleMania have Cody and Roman WrestleMania 40 main event and have Cody take the title off Roman. Then I think that that's, that'd be the best right there. Yeah. That, uh, that WrestleMania spot needs to be Cody and Roman. It just needs oh, yeah. to be because if <clears throat> right now I feel like everybody loves Cody Rhodes, people are crazy about him. They go ape shit when he comes out. Yeah. I think if something happens and he doesn't get that main event spot at WrestleMania, or if he does and he doesn't win again, I think then people are going to start losing like their faith in him and mm-hmm. like his popularity is going to start to dwindle. Because the other thing too, man, is um, I kind of think uh, L.A. Knight. I kind of think L.A. Knight might be a little more popular than Cody Rhodes, man. Oh, you think so? I don't. It's, I think it's they're to right tell. there together. Yeah, I, I I think it's like a a fifty one forty nine type deal. Like yeah. it's not, it, it it's not that that far off. But what if uh, what if they decided to switch things up, man? They put fucking L.A. Knight. Against Roman Reigns and WrestleMania, uh, oh. yeah. I, I mean, I like LA Knight, but I would, yeah. I'd be like, nah, man, I can't. I don't do think that. he's quite ready for that yet. What would be like? I think, I think they're gonna do LA Knight versus Roman at Crown Jewel or something, and obviously Roman beats LA Knight. But what would be sick is if LA Knight beats like uh, Rey Mysterio or somebody for the U.S. title. Mm-hmm. I think that'd be so, sick. They're setting up uh, Logan Paul versus Rey Mysterio. I think that's going to yep. be, and I could honestly, man, I could see Logan Paul beating him for that belt, and then yeah. at WrestleMania, LA Knight challenging Logan Paul for that belt, and then he beats Logan Paul. That'd be dope. That'd be dope. I because people fucking hate Logan Paul. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and Rey Mysterio's run with that title, so f- like since he's had it, hasn't been anything special, right? Like. I can't mm-hmm. think of anything great he's done with it. Yeah. Yeah, for, but, for some reason, like that, I think the Intercontinental Champ, I think the Intercontinental Champion has just, like, overshadowed the U.S. Oh, Championship. Yeah. Like, Gunther, whew, that dude's an animal. I love watching his matches. Yeah, dude. That match he had on Monday with Bronson Reed. Yeah. Man, that was that was a good one. Knockdown drag out. Yeah, that was, that was a Haas match. Hell yeah. Good. <clears throat> that was really good. Uh, but all right, yeah, man, we're, we're we're past that hour mark. That's it. That's our hour. That's it. Done. Calling it. Uh, you guys get no more until next it. week. I, I know you guys are gonna be fiending all week, like itching like crackheads. Like I need more fall damage. <laughs> uh, but uh, anyways, next week is the big one. Next week is the Halloween extravaganza. Um, our first annual Halloween episode. I'm pretty stoked about it. Got some games lined up. Going to pit you and uh, Rhino against each other um, for the fate of all mankind. Um, but appreciate everybody else listening. I appreciate you. If you're on YouTube, make sure you like and subscribe down below. Um, if you're on Apple, uh, Google, iHeartRadio, Spotify, all that stuff, rate us. And then come on over to YouTube, subscribe there, and see the video version of this. Um, we appreciate everybody listening, and we'll see you next week for the first annual Fall Damage Central Halloween Extravaganza. See you guys. Peace.